So we're live for now. And once again, I'll call the Governance and Operations Committee meeting September 26th uh, to order. We have four items on today's agenda. The first item is from Parks and Rec, and it's for the Trail Memorial Center uh, Makeup Air Unit uh, Award contract. Uh, Robert is here to answer any questions council may have, given that uh, the budget is being asked to increase from 100000 to uh, $116,000 uh, and that the contract be awarded to Venture Mechanical, who was the low bidder at $93,223 plus taxes. So did you have anything you wanted to add, Robert, to your report on this uh, capital project at your, uh, this project at uh, the Trail Memorial Center? Uh, just that it's a, it's a critical project and that we need this makeup air unit to operate during the hockey season. Otherwise, we're not supposed to operate the refrigeration plant. So it's a critical piece of equipment. And we're fortunate that Venture Mechanical came in with a price that was reasonable given the cost escalations that we're experiencing all over the place. And certainly there's going to be other recreation projects that come in under budget, which will help offset the request for a slight increase to the uh, uh, capital budget for this project. Okay, thanks, Robert. Are there any questions of Mr. Baker? Move approval. Okay, a motion has been made by Councillor Kishoni to award the contract to Venture Mechanical in the amount of 93223 plus applicable taxes, fees, and charges, and furthermore, that the budget be increased from 100000 to one hundred and. 16,000 for reasons stated in the report. Do we have a seconder? I'll second. Seconded by Lisa. Any other discussion or questions? I have if a question. Not, I have a question, first. Sandy. Oh, go ahead, Carol. Okay, I just noticed that in the uh, report, Robert, that you had indicated that the quote from Venture Mechanical was the lowest, but it does not include electrical. So the quote that we're accepting, I'm assuming it does include electrical. You're on yes, mute. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's better when I'm on mute. Yes, correct. <laughs> the quote that Venture provided includes everything that we asked for. Okay. okay. Thank Any you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Item number two point one is. Sorry. Oh. Item number two under public works is the purchase of a 20, a 2022 hybrid pickup truck. It's brought before council for approval in the amount of $68,014.44 from AM Ford plus applicable taxes and charges. You've all received the report. Are there any questions? Go ahead, Lisa. Um, I'll, I don't have any questions, but just a statement. So I'm going to move the recommendation. And this is really exciting that we're getting our first hybrid vehicle and starting to move to more renewables for our fleet. So uh, well done uh, with the procurement of this. And yeah, I hope it goes through. Do we have a second to proceed? Second. Seconded by Colleen. Any questions or discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, item 2.2 under Public Works is the Cambridge Creek Violin Lake Ecosystem Restoration Project for heavy equipment contract in the amount of $77,500 to Silverton Transport Limited. Any questions, discussion or action on this item? Robert, um, Sandy, I just hope that the when this work starts, uh, we, we let the Trail Wildlife Association know what's going on. And if, in fact, there's an opportunity for them to take a look up there, um, looking at the pictures and knowing the amount of time I spent up with Violet Lake and on the mill pond. I mean, the Violet Lake looks bad. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not clear why it looks bad, but with all that debris and the logging, so a log sitting there. So. I like to get an opinion, you know, from them on it too. I've got an opinion from the other side, but I didn't have an opinion from them. So I'm hoping that it goes through. Take they're going to take a look at it, 
And then, of course, we have that rest of the, over a million and a half dollars to spend. And I don't really know what's going to be. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine how they're going to spend all that money. Thank you. Carol? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. McClure. I totally agree with Robert is saying. Um, myself and another counselor had the opportunity. We were called upon by, I believe they all were with the wildlife, but extremely concerned citizens about what's happened up there. And we did a tour. And... I had never been up to Violin Lake since I was 16 years of age, but I was just absolutely appalled at the condition that it's in and what was left there. And we were informed, I don't know if my numbers, if I'm remembering correctly, I thought they said um, 900 truckloads of cut lumber and everything was brought down to dump in the area. And if that's the case, I can't understand why that was needed. And yeah, we, we need to do some serious work up there and some cleanup there. It's very sad, the situation that it's in. So I totally agree with uh, what Councillor Koshoni is saying, that the wildlife needs to be included. I think they have felt from some of the explanations they gave us that they weren't um, kind of given the courtesy of the progress and what was being decided up there, and they would have appreciated that. Uh, they're a group that has had strong ties and big concerns for the Violin Lake area, as they have with other wildlife areas surrounding us. So thanks for that suggestion, Robert. Okay, so, Robert, did you make a motion to proceed with uh, the contract at 77.5 with the understanding that uh, Mr. McClure has noted the fact that uh, input would be... Um, Councillor Santori, yes. I think you should let Mr. McClure speak. Oh, I didn't see his hand up, sorry. Go ahead, Colin. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, it's super unfortunate that um, council members are going up with the trail environmental group there without any knowledge of why all the things that were done up there have been done. And it is really uh, hard because I know that you are people that make decisions and when you have someone bending your ear that this is terrible, this is a disaster, this is not what it's supposed to be without the full education of the restoration biologists that went through the process, uh, it makes, very, makes it very hard to move people off their positions. Um, we are, and I committed to you that when the person comes back that we can get an explanation and whether or not that's in person or whether or not that's even through um, uh, you know, a PowerPoint presentation to council, uh, but there are reasons for the mess, as they say. It is how uh, the blogs are there to promote uh, birds eating the berries and different plants and so that they have their droppings and that has a natural reseeding process. Uh, there's a number of work that has been done there. And like I said, it's super unfortunate that people are making statements that they haven't had uh, the opportunity to understand the why before sort of bending someone's ear about uh, finding out why. And so again, that's part of it, I would say, is is likely part of where the city has kind of fallen down on not educating council as well. I know that I did get a tour and it was, you know, it's really something when you see someone that does this work, does this work across the country, as in Canada, United States, um, and re-restoration of this type of project um, and is very educated in it. And when they explain to you the why, it becomes quite clear. So um, I hope that we can get an opportunity to get this work done. If that means that the contractor who's taking care of this work is here, that we can again, either have a tour or even just a, have them come and speak to council and to the community as to the why. I did, um, oh, go ahead. Carol, go ahead. Go ahead, Carol. Mute here. Okay. Sorry. I just want to make it clear that I think we were up there mostly for a purpose of listening and observing. We certainly didn't have answers to the, a lot of questions that they were asking. And I think their, their general feeling was that if they had been included more from day one on the, the back plans that you had spoken to yourself, uh, Mr. McClure, that we might not be a, we might not be where we are with a situation where some of them so concerned and feeling disappointed and upset about what they're looking at right now. So it wasn't a situation where we went up to answer their questions and say we could fix this and fix that. We were just there for observing and listening. No, and I appreciate that. But even the whole process of bringing in uh, fiber that will then naturally um, 
start to decompose. And with the seeds that will come from the perchings of where the logs are up for birds, uh, will allow the trees to grow up and have soil. And it will, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that's going to happen in six months, right? We're no. talking 60 years kind of thing, right? So, uh, and I understand people are like, we want a vision, we want to see it pristine the way that it was, or but that's not what the restoration plan is. And so again, we need to get this out uh, and communicate. But that's where I think like for me, Councillor Adobe, it's just unfortunate when you're having someone that's saying we've done a terrible job here without knowing the why, I guess, right? Where does council I will, make, stand? I will make that motion, Sandy. Okay, so the motion to proceed at $77,500 to Silverton Transport Limited. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it. Seconded by Colleen. Any further questions or discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion is carried. Item 2.3 is the retaining wall uh, for 1500 block C Avenue. Uh, recommendation that uh, this work not proceed at this time. Um, a report's been uh, circulated to council, but Colin, you may want to elaborate on on the report. Um, yeah, just again, um, as uh, the previous, uh, both Mr. Baker on the, the cost pressures we're seeing on work being done, uh, our hope here is, is that um, and of course, you don't want to run into a situation where we've got a recession where people are desperate, but that sometimes could be a place where uh, your municipality who has some money in the bank, wants to get some of this work done, is able to keep people employed during a recession uh, versus competing with the private industry who maybe really struck, may struggle in the next little while as interest rates increase and capital projects that they want to take on uh, become less viable. So again, it's a good time sometimes because if we've got money in reserve to be able to get some of this work done that uh, we're hoping that we're going to get some better pricing as we go forward. Also, they're, uh, from the author of the report, they did note that uh, this is something that there isn't a complete concern in, so it's not an immediate um, that it's coming down, but we do want to get in front of it. So we're looking at trying to post that out uh, into 2023. Okay. Any questions, uh, Lisa? I'll just make the motion to uh, not proceed with the 1500 block Cedar Avenue retaining wall engineering project in 2022. Okay, do we have a seconder? Carol, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. Uh, next item on the agenda is a recommendation to enter into a contract for Silver City Days vendor contract with uh, Shooting Star Amusements. These, uh, this is the same group we had had over the last four or five years when we did have uh, uh, Silver City Days. We found Silver City, uh, sorry, Shooting Star Amusements to be extremely clean, uh, professional, paid us fair compensation for the contract. And it is being recommended that uh, we proceed. They are under new ownership. I actually met the new owner uh, in Creston and uh, he used to help manage uh, Shooting Star at one time, but has since purchased it from the previous owner. So it's great to see that uh, something about Silver City Days is back on the table and then it looks like we may be able to proceed for next year. So did you want to add anything to that, Colin? Or, sorry, uh, Colleen. No, no, just um, just wondering if you go around to different small communities to ride these amusement rides. That's one thing I was wondering. If, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I took my grandson on the Ferris wheel. That's enough. No, um, no, Colleen but, but I, I'm quite excited to see that we're going to have this and, and get geared up for a, a 2023 Silver City Days. Awesome, Colleen. I think I saw your hand up. Oh, thank you. I was actually just going to make the motion for the recommendation. Okay, so moved by Colleen. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Paul, any other questions? Uh, I have one, Councillor Santori. So 3.4.3, uh, I just want to clarify, is that supposed to be 2025? Because it says there's two 2024. So I just want to make sure that that's uh, what we're looking at. It's not two optional dates in 2024 because of issues we talked about with um, ice rental with the Smokies. That's correct. It's okay. Uh, that should read 3.4.3 should read 2025. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
If there are no Can other I just, questions? Sandy, ahead, if I Sandy. could just say that I think the community is going to be so excited to see that we've got this booked. They were really looking forward to it this year, as you probably saw in the comments on Facebook and uh, when we made the announcement that we weren't going to go forward. So, yay, something positive and something to look forward to. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, and thanks Paul. to the staff for doing this. Like, it was great that uh, you just went ahead and, you know, processed it and got in line for rides, <laughs> so to say. Thank you. All right. No other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. Okay, moving right along. I've lost my spot. Oh, grants of need. First of all, do we have a motion to uh, accept the report on grants? Here are the top search results. So moved, Robert. I'll second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, next item, 4.2, is a request for a waiver rental from the Trail District uh, Chamber of Commerce in the amount of 349 and that's for the uh, gymnasium to host the All Candidates Forum. In the past, it has been standard procedure to waive that rental. So moved. Eleanor. Eleanor, do we have a seconder? Paul Butler, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. And the next is a request for Greater Trail Minor Hockey Association for a request for rental waiver as well. So and moved, Robert. Robert, seconded by Carol. All those in favor? Opposed, the motion is carried. And lastly, is a request for a rental waiver as well from the Columbia Basin Alliance on Literacy. I would move that too. Moved by Robert, seconded by Paul. Any questions? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Opposed, the motion is carried. And if we could get a motion to adjourn, 